Okay, so today's interview is with Jack Woolley. Um, I'd just like to say uh, thank you for coming on to the show. No problem. Thanks very much for okay. having me. Um, just firstly, congratulations on qualifying for Tokyo Olympics. What an achievement for you, your coach, your club and your country. How did you feel you. knowing you will be the first Irish Taekwondo athlete at the Olympics? Um, obviously, it was extremely surreal for me and my coach because we'd worked up so many competitions. We've done so many like trips abroad to get to this stage. Like We've given it basically everything we have like we've put everything on hold just for that one moment and when it when we found out I was a bit it was like I was expecting this kind of euphoria moment to be like so excited and like buzzing but the type of person I am it just hit me I was like right okay now you're in you've got to go for a medal like it just kind of it took me a few days to actually realize and then it started kicking in like emotionally I was like wow like this is such a crazy achievement but when we first found out I was a bit like okay what next so yeah. well uh, talking to a few other athletes like from different sports in Ireland them um, they said that they with their first Olympics when they qualified they went through a similar feeling so yeah well when I talk about it, I do I do smile and I do feel very proud of what we've achieved over here so yeah definitely huh? a great achievement I mean we'll go on to your achievements later on in the interview um, yeah. but I mean just to qualify for the Olympics is is a great achievement in itself you know so uh, but I'm sure the That'll be followed up with a, a conversation about the medals that you, you won at the Olympics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so um, let's have a look here. So, so um, I want to go right back to where it all started, basically. Um, you started yeah. Taekwondo at the age of six. How did you get into Taekwondo? And did you ever see yourself back then, a young lad from Tala, becoming one of the best in your weight division worldwide? Um, so I started Taekwondo because my brother um, was bullied in primary school. But, like, he was put into it for more of a, like, a martial arts kind of self-defense reason. Whereas with me, it was, I was just going down and seeing him training. He's five years older, so, like, I kind of looked up to him at the time and wanted to get involved. And I was very flexible as a kid, so I used to go down and see them all doing the high kicks. I was, like, doing it down the back while we were watching them down on the benches or the chairs down the back of the hall. So, as soon as I was able to, we weren't allowed to start until we were six. So, on my sixth birthday, I was, I jumped straight in and I did. now that we, we I've changed clubs a fair bit um, the club I'm in now is South Dublin Taekwondo I've been there since about 2009 mm -hmm. but before that I was kind of chopping and changing clubs because a lot of clubs didn't do competitive Taekwondo yeah. um, so I, at that age I didn't really understand like Taekwondo and like the sports side of things so I was just doing it because I enjoyed doing it but um, yeah no it didn't really hit me that I could like achieve so much back then because I was a pump side player up until um roughly like 2000, 2011 like I did sparring on the side but um I was mainly pump side player hence the flexibility and leg control but um now when we went to our first G1 in Spanish Open 2012 that was when okay maybe I have it in me to get some medals and obviously in US when we got that first senior medal first competition as a senior first medal uh, I such a big event I was like okay we have it in me to to go all the way but as a kid I knew I had stuff in me to to do well in something in life but I didn't necessarily assume it would have been the taekwondo so cool good excellent man. so um so present day you and your coach have you know they've seen some amount of countries over the years I mean financially it must have been difficult for you both but bringing back up to date your medal haul, according to taekwondodata.com, obviously. Um, uh, yeah. 18 golds, 18 silvers, and 12 bronzes. I mean, that's brilliant. Now, I know you're going to correct me on this. <laughs> it's fine. Taekwondo data can... It, it's good, like, when you can look back at other, other people and stuff, but, you know, it does miss the odd one or two, but, yeah. like, that's fine. I don't want to brag about it. Like. <laughs> that's it. But is it 52 you're at now? 52 open medals? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's brilliant. I mean, that's amazing. You know, so I think, uh, yeah. There's no, I've been watching some of your fights, obviously, uh, you know, the most recent ones. Uh, uh, yeah, you've got a great style. I, I do enjoy watching it, you know, to be honest. So. Thanks. So it's good. Um, so when people watch you fighting, I'd say, and like you'd say as well, your flexibility and your ability to score in weird positions are what they'll yeah. be impressed with. So how did you train for this, or how do you train for that? Ability there, as he comes back with, after front leg. Um, so we would 
I was like I said, I was flexible from being young, so I never really lost it. But um, I don't know. One day, it was actually the unorthodox kicks came about when I started watching a certain athlete at a Belgian Open in 2013. Now she's probably gonna hate me for saying this, but Rebecca McGowan threw a scorpion kick in yeah, the yeah. Belgian Open, and I was watching her. And I was like, because I knew her from my competitions when I was going to Scottish Open. She would come like over here for South Dublin Championships or wherever. So we kind of like knew each other. But I went up to her as soon as I seen it. I said, wow, that kick is phenomenal. I want you to like show me how you did it. So she got in the clinch and she was kind of like helping me out and stuff. So since then, we went back to our club and worked on it really over and over and over again. And looked at different ways you could throw kicks like that. So um, now you've got the likes of Bradley Sindon, Mirashem Mir Husseini from Iran, like all these top level athletes that have looked at certain kicks and said, how can I better that? How can I make my own twist? So just even when you're stretching, unorthodox stretching, it's like, okay, my knee can maybe go at this angle today. I will make my knee go at this angle tomorrow and then the next day. And then eventually you're able to spin your leg the whole way around. So, you know, it's just practice, practice, practice at that stage. No, oh, brilliant, eh? It's excellent. So Rebecca McGowan will be proud to know that she's helped you along your way, you know? Yeah, I always, she always slags me because um, <laughs> I'm like, everyone kind of knows like, Jack Woody for um, his scorpion kick. Yeah. But I'm like, she every time someone says it, she's like, well, it was actually mine. He just robbed it. And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> she's doing really well as well, eh? She's doing well. Yeah, she's, she's doing really good. good. So, um, obviously... This is the 1st of May, 2020. Um, lockdown yeah. is currently upon us, you know. So, um, I mean, what can I say? It's hard for a lot of people out there, let alone the athletes like yourself who should be competing soon at the Olympics. Um, yeah. I spoke with your coach, Robert Taff, and he, had, he told me that he's been keeping an eye on you during this time. Um, and he mentioned that this lockdown has probably enhanced your preparation for Tokyo um, and feels you'll come out of this stronger, faster, and more prepared for what's ahead. I mean, how do you feel hearing that? No, I definitely agree. Um, like, being the only athlete at this level in in the country, I'm used to training in very small groups like that. So you've got the big national teams who are used to having 20, 30 people on the mats at one time sparring against really top-level players, where a lot of my sparring is with juniors and cadets. Yeah. Um, I do get away to some camps and stuff, but predominantly it's with the younger athletes a lot of my training is with Rob on his own like doing pad work and doing like fitness training or um, my s and I was able I was lucky to um, be able to give have got, gotten equipment off people okay. um, the Irish Sports Institute where I was able to bring bars and like weights home and stuff so I was lucky in that case I've, I, my training partner is living with me at the moment my parents kindly agreed to let them move in so I do I am still able to get sparring someone to hold a pad at home, like someone to just buzz off. Like it's, it's not as bad for me because, you know, usually I'm training in the morning, I come home, I have a nap and then I go back to training and then I come home and like, I just chill out. Like I'm not, never actually out. The only difference is I'm just training at home. Mm -hmm. I have mats and stuff. So um, I don't think I will be taking any steps back, if anything, definitely taking steps forward in, in respects to everybody else who might be decreasing and not used to these types of, um, situations and home training whereas I'm definitely used to it and it hasn't really impacted me at all. Brilliant, yeah, that's good, that's good. Um, so Jack, it's obviously it's time to ask some personal questions. Um, are, you, are you ready? Sure. <laughs> so what currently are you watching on Netflix? <laughs> <laughs> um, I wasn't, I've not really watching Netflix to be oh. fair. Um, oh, you must be about the I only am, one. <laughs> um, like, I watch the odd bit, but I'm more of a, a TV type of person. Okay. Like this week, that this week they had a new chase on. Okay. And it was great. Like they were like a different take on the chase, and I'm a weird, I'm a weirdo for my quizzes. So, um, that's literally the highlight of my day is sitting down and watching the chase, which is pretty sad. I'm a 21 year old who enjoys that. But um, yeah, yeah. goggle box, I love goggle box. So, and, so, you um, won't, so you won't be getting sponsored by Netflix, but you might be getting sponsored by the Chase. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> or if they let me go on and try win a few, uh, a few euro or whatever to try and travel. But yeah, um, you know, like 
I think it'd be funny if they if I was, was able to go on an episode of Gogglebox or something. I just think I, some of the stuff that I would come off with one might be a bit give or take. So maybe mm. after I um, stop competing and it's still going, I'll be able to jump in. So I'm, I'm sure they'd love to have you on there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Gogglebox is pretty good. I must admit, I watched that as well. You know, so that's good. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so the next one, stepping along from the Netflix side of things, you've yeah. obviously got. TikTok. So, are you on TikTok? <laughs> I am on TikTok. Yeah. Um, well, I don't. I don't really post on it. Like, I have one video. And okay. I posted one video, and I'm kind of. I'm kind of nervous because to post another one. I'm this type of person who does really well at something, and they don't really want to do another thing in case they like mess it up. Okay. Because we put this one video up, and it kind of went viral. <laughs> <laughs> it was just me and my mate messing in the kitchen and uh, it just went a bit wrong so I just said I'm going to put it on TikTok as my first video and it kind of went a little bit it blew up a bit but um, no I do, I do be, it's, it's, it did impact my sleep pattern a bit at the start of um, yeah, <laughs> at the start of lockdown but um I realised we're not going to get out of this anytime soon, so I needed to get back into routine and yeah. get my sleep back. So I set myself half an hour to watch a bit of TikTok before I go to bed, and that's it. I can't be sitting on it until 4 a.m. in the morning, and like I was. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think the social media, it's, you know, it can take over your life, and it is good to, to maybe use it to chill out after a hard training session. But yeah, you're right. You don't want to spend till 4 in the morning doing it, you know. But I really reckon that... And obviously, you are pretty good at it. But I think uh, TikTok, you'd be pretty good with some of the some of the dance moves and stuff. With your flexibility, <laughs> yeah, the flexibility and the fact, like with the pump say, I yeah. kind of know I'm able to pick up on like yeah. what what to do. So, huh. yeah, my mom actually, the one thing she's always said, she was like, I, I'd love you to get to the Olympics, but you know what else? I'd love if you were on Strictly. I'm like, no, ma'am, that's just not gonna happen. <laughs> Yeah, never say never, you know what I mean? Never say never. We'll, we'll see. Get an Olympic gold medal, they'll be shouting at you saying, come on to Strictly, you know? And your mum will be <laughs> Yeah, No, that's cool. Excellent. Okay, so um, obviously lockdown can be quite difficult for um, the weight. You know, I'm speaking from yeah. personal, you know what I mean, to be honest. Um, so how is the temptation to order takeaways? Um, I still do it. <laughs> Simple as. Um, I actually, when you put up like questions on Instagram or everything, a lot of people hone in on my weight because they know I fight at 58 kilos. Yeah. And, in, and people know that the 58 struggle the most. Definitely. Yeah. I don't. I used to at 54. Like 54 has put me in like a really bad headspace trying to make the weight. It was very difficult for yeah. me. But um, 58 now, I'm walking around at 61, oh. which is handy. Like I can't, I'm not really going over that. The odd day I might hit 62, but that might be if I don't train or like if I get a takeaway, like you said. But the next day it's back down. Like oh, some yeah. it's between 60 and 62, like which is yeah, an, a dream for most athletes who are, who are sitting around 66. So. Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, I suppose it depends on how much ice cream you eat as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to be fair, I haven't, I haven't. Um, Eat too much of that because my mom does all the shopping. Right, and okay, that's good. She yeah. knows, and she's scared of my mood swings when I have to cut weight. So she's she. I've heard her and my dad talking about um, like when I first get back into competitions, they're like, oh, the first weight cut's gonna be awful, and then they're like, they're planning their food shops around like that's good. So that's that I so that I can't get heavy, but even if I did, I wouldn't be that bad. Like compared to what I used to be, I used to cut from 62, 61, 62 down to. 54 which was horrendous yeah it, it was very bad yeah. and I was just because I was quite tall like I was world number one at 54 and I just kind of I had that mentality where I needed to be 54 and then we, when we transferred to 58 I'm still walking around at the same weight and the, I'm doing just as good if not better yeah, so. mm-hmm. not cool good 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 and um, so it's obviously hard for me as an interviewer to stay away from the Olympics and um, wondering how you and your coach intend to keep you calm and focused up to and at the games. Do you ever visualize how it's going to be at the games and how you'd like things to go? Um, 
so we tried to qualify for Rio um, yeah. in 2016. Yeah. Um, and I didn't get in. We had to get a gold or a silver at the qualifiers and I got bronze. I know. Yeah. It was it was tough at the time, but like I was only seventeen, mm-hmm. so you know there there's advantages and disadvantages. But the definitely the disadvantages of not going, we were going to use that as like a as like a test run. To we we probably we knew to be fair. If I went in at, in Rio, the chances of me meddling were very slim. Okay. Like I would have been probably one of the lowest mm-hmm. in the bookies at fifty eight for that big event. But I feel like I'm now I'm going into Tokyo as not the favorite, but definitely yeah. will, will be one of them um, mm-hmm. to to get a medal. Fingers crossed. Well, were you? We were going to use that time to experience the village, to experience the the lights, the fact that there's only one ring, like the fact that the family were going to travel and having them in the audience. Because I know from past times, I don't really like pe- like people there. <laughs> I'm so used to traveling. I'm so used to ha- traveling with just Rob. Or yeah. like my teammates and having having like fellow athletes show for me like the likes of Lauren Williams and mm. like people who I get on with really well with they might show for me but it's it would be strange to have like parents and mm-hmm. like even aunties and uncles turn up because they've never seen me fight so we yeah. were going to use that as like an experience but we don't have that I can't go back in time so we're just gonna go in and cut it out we've we've had like the mac grand prix and stuff Mm -hmm. like in manchester grand prix london grand prix so we'll hopefully be able to block them out and uh, just use the experience as a positive like yeah and you're not you're not 17 anymore you know what i mean you're exactly so you're more mature you know you're you're ready for it you know i mean you you don't need to have gone to that one you know you you were close to getting in but that was when you were 17 you know so now you're you're a different athlete you know your your game there's certain things you've added into your game now that is not a problem as well, you know. And I think, I think you don't you, you don't need to worry about going to the Olympics the first time. I think you'll be fine, you know. Personally, you know what I mean. But yeah, no, I agree definitely. Uh, no, that's cool. Um, so I read on on your Instagram um, that your favourite fighter is the minus forty nine kilogram Thailand Olympic gold yes. medalist, Pani Pak. I'm not going to try and yeah. pronounce her last name. I've struggled with that. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, no, she's, so then, um, she's what, what a great you, athlete. What is it you like and admire about her as a fighter then? Um, I just like the fact that she's she's diverse. Like she doesn't just have that one thing. Like you'll see she can play at any distance. Like she can play at long range with her check. She can play in middle distance with back leg tourniquet kicks and in close. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be in close. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. That scorpion kick is going to hit you hard. Like um, a lot of people, I'm not saying that I agree with them, but a lot of people online would compare us in the clinch to be very similar. We like we're quite dangerous in the clinch, um. But no, I just really like our style. The fact that she's so calm, I've never seen her panic ever. Like I watch her matches, and even when she's fighting like Wu Jing Yu, the Chinese yeah. athlete, and she's just so calm. She didn't care who she was. She went into that ring and says, "I'm Panny Pack. Yeah. I don't care who I'm against," and she just goes in. Like, the fact that she didn't go to, I think she might have gone to one Grand Prix last year. And she didn't go to any of the rest of them. Just because she was just so cool. She's like, okay, I don't need to go in and just claim everything. She turned up at a world, walked in, walked out with a gold medal. Like, how yeah. cool can you get? Like, she's just, she's such an idol for me. Like, and especially because she's my, like, similar age to me. It's, it's crazy. Like, when people say that I have, like, they're my fan, I find it a bit strange. So. Mm-hmm. For, for me to, I'd say she must get it all the time. <laughs> no, no, that's it. I mean, she's certainly good. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, so we already know who has qualified for the Olympics in your weight division. Um, yeah. In your opinion, who else will be successful in qualifying, and how does that make you feel? Um, so, it's it's very unpredictable. Mm-hmm. If yeah. now that I think about it, because like with with the Rio thing, when I got bronze, nobody was expecting that, mm-hmm. and it was. Everyone had their favourites to qualify for Rio, and not all of them got in. Mm-hmm. It was a bit of a shock. Similar to um, to this one, you never know, but I would definitely say um, Portugal has a good chance of getting in, Rio Braganza. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you've, it depends, because the, the criteria to represent your country at that type of qualifiers, you can only send like a certain amount of males, a certain amount of females, based on who's already qualified from your country. Yeah. So I'm 
haven't really done the maths. I haven't really felt it was necessary just because I'm in. I don't really need to worry about it until yeah. like we find out who's in. But like, you know, you've got Turkey, Dennis Dagdell, and you've got um, Serbia. You've got these, and some upcoming juniors, you've got Frederick Emil Olsen from Sweden, Tobias Hill from Denmark. You know, you've got all these like top, top players that just bear, didn't get in yet. But definitely it's going to be an amazing event to watch. Like, hopefully it's live streamed or who knows, I might even be there um, myself just to kind of watch and if we can anyways. Yeah, that's it. No, that's cool. Good. Um, so on that last question, um, if you could write the report going to Sport Island after the Olympics, what would it say? Who would you fight? And what would the result be? Okay, so we're planning on um, being in a certain brackets. Like that's that's the way our mind works. Like mm -hmm. last last year we were at the Sofia Open, mm -hmm. and um, we actually threw the final. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, on purpose because it was the the last event coming up to World Championships that the ranking points would have been added. Mm -hmm. If I'd have got gold, it would have shifted me into another corner with mm -hmm. Jun Jang in it, the Korean mm -hmm. athlete. We didn't want that because there was probably a better chance of me getting a medal if I was in a different corner mm -hmm. a quarter final against not Korea. Mm -hmm. So um, we didn't fight the final. We gave the medal to actually a good friend of mine, Cesar Rodriguez from Mexico. Yeah. Um, I didn't really mind doing that to be fair. <laughs> but now we're, we're planning on looking at the corners. Hopefully I get to fight people that either I know I can be or I have beaten in the past um, in early matches. But the first one's very unpredictable. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully somebody who gets in from a, a qualification in a continent that wouldn't be as yeah. strong mm -hmm. um, then on to a quarterfinal is always going to be difficult, difficult at an Olympics but um, like the likes of Tortosa or Vito De La Quilla, it's mm -hmm. always a, such a close match with us like the last time I fought Vito it was 24-22 in the mm -hmm. final of the European Games a bit crazy but like the, like the fact that I know I can beat him he knows he can beat me it's going to be a fun match um, whereas I've never beaten the Korean athlete before, so we try to stay away from his corner. Tortosa, I've fought him, I think it's eight times now. Like, we're kind of sick of seeing each other. But at the Olympics, it wouldn't necessarily be the worst draw for either of us, just because we both know we have the beatings of each other, and it, it's going to be an entertaining mm -hmm. fight for everyone at home. Mm -hmm. Next. Yeah, and then they probably either Jun Jang or Hadi Poor in the final. It depends who's on fire on the day. But yeah. I'd say Jun Jang won't have a have a problem getting into a medal. That's if he keeps his form up. You never know how this lockdown is affecting people. You never know. Like, we've only qualified the place for our country as well. Mm -hmm. Like, no, you haven't necessarily qualified the place for you mm -hmm. unless, like, there's certain ways that they can be changed. So, who knows? Jun Jang could have a, a bad couple of months after this lockdown and, be yeah. swapped out for the likes of uh, the 54, Jun So Bay, or even Taehun Kim could make a, a miraculous comeback and take his take mm -hmm. his place. We never know. So it's all down to who we see on the day. But I think Jun Jang, I yeah. don't see him slipping anytime soon. So that'll be the final, you and Jun Jang. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> a great final, anyway. It'd be, it'd be really good, yeah. yeah. No, excellent. Good. Okay. So what would you say to all the young and up-and-coming ath Taekwondo athletes that look up to you right now? Um, especially the Irish cadets who seem to be doing pretty well in the last few years. What would you say to them? What advice would you give yeah. them? Um, I would, the likes of cadets, I would definitely tell them not to burn themselves out too soon. You see a lot of cadets who are doing G1, 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 G1. And to be fair, there's even some Irish athletes that are doing that that I would be quite close to. I'm not going to name any names, but they're, I, don't, I don't see why a cadet needs to be hitting G1s, G2s at the level that seniors do. There's, no, there's, got, there's an implemented like, thing of ranking points now this year. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how much that's going to work out now, seeing as what's happened. Like, not to burn out, don't be cutting drastic weight. That's one thing I'd always say, because yeah. even as a kid, I was still doing it. Like, mm -hmm. it was it was kind of ridiculous. You, you even get into lying about your weight, mm -hmm. because your, your cadets, your coach can't stand there and weigh you in. Mm -hmm. 
and like in a, just used to you can't do that because of child protecting reasons so mm-hmm. you do even from personal experience you do lie about your weight you go in you're 40 49 kilos and you're supposed to be 45 you come out oh i'm only 46 mm-hmm. like so that's it, it that's the dangerous aspect of the fact that we're a weight cutting sport so definitely don't stress about your weight because your body's yeah. naturally going to go up you're only a kid and um, like you, you do see I wasn't a very good cadet at all I had one G1 medal as a cadet I have cadets in Ireland now who we never would have thought um, Ireland would have such a strong cadet team and they've got 8 to 10 G1 medals as a cadet which is crazy like I only had one but even juniors I only had 5 so I mean on, on that you know, like when you were saying when you were a cadet, you didn't, you didn't have, much, you know, you didn't, you'd got one medal, but there was yeah. no one really in Ireland for you to, to aspire to. Whereas now yeah. they do have, whether you like it or not, they have <laughs> you to aspire to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you look at Great Britain back in the day before Jay Jones got her her medal. You know, um, there yeah. wasn't there wasn't really that big a team behind them, and now now look at them. You know, so so it just takes yeah. one person to to change a country as well the dynamics of a country so um you know having that good cadet team getting all those medals i think it's a great thing you know so so yeah, yeah like even even like i said like i, I sparred them all mm. the time yeah like i know you you just said jay jones there but she was part of the national team academy like she was in that kind of like circle and you did have the kids that looked up to her who who would who would have chopped off an arm and a leg to spar you know yeah, um, yeah. I think that's that's somewhere that we have a little bit of an advantage for our younger generation where they're able to get in, they're able to spar the likes of me and some of my teammates, which I think is a it's a it's a brilliant thing for them to have. Definitely, yeah. Well, well good. Okay. So so any other advice? Just just basically don't don't lie about your weight. Um and don't just don't lie about your weight. And then anything else, any other bit of advice, what would you say? Um train hard. Don't don't overtrain. Mm-hmm. That's a big thing you do see like you're you're young and you will you're a lot lighter than us if 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 a senior athlete is training 20 hours a week there's no need for a 10 year old to be training 20 hours a week you know just train in moderation train what you feel is best talk to your coach and stuff like that um but no just just keep going at the end of the day like don't give up because i know there's times where i felt like i wanted to quit like some of the like we're going to going to junior worlds and getting 20 point gap yeah that's not fun yeah and now look so yeah, exactly there might be times where you feel really rubbish about yourself and you might not feel good but keep training like yeah and just train smart eh? train smart yeah train smart yeah good 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 okay um so when i interviewed uh, bianca walden and aaron cook last week one of the, the yeah. questions was what are you most looking forward to doing after lockdown is lifted um so what would your answer be um, this is gonna like this is gonna sound stupid, but all I want is a decent haircut. Like, I let my dad, I let my dad try and quit, and now it's grown at mad angles. Like there's a bit sticking out here, and like I knew I was coming on camera, so I spent about twenty minutes trying to flatten my hair down because there's a big mad kink here, and then I was this close to straightening it, and it was just a, a mess. Like I definitely want a decent haircut. Mm-hmm. I miss a Starbucks so bad. Yeah, which sounds ridiculous. <laughs> I would never thought I would have said this, but I miss airports. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hate airports. Like I li- live in them, but I'm like I haven't been travel. I haven't travelled in two months. Yeah, and for some people that might not seem a lot, but when you're travelling every single week for competitions, like there was a comp four competitions I did in three weeks mm-hmm. in three different continents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I always came back to Ireland as well. So it was just, <laughs> I'm so used to it. Like, and I miss aeroplane food at this stage. It's, it's, it's getting, it's getting silly. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Oh, well, but the haircut will be, be first on the, first on, first on the list. Yeah. I think for me too as well, you know, yeah, definitely. You know, but. It's the first thing I did actually when I qualified. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were sat in the house and, because of the way the things had worked out, we didn't know straight away that we'd qualified. We had to wait until the Grand Grand Slam had finished to see if a Chinese athlete did like certain, got a certain medal. And it was very nerve wracking just watching the Grand Slam because of the time difference. So we 
we waited and we found out that I was qualified and they were, I had um, there's a documentary that Ireland uh, TV are the owner and they were they came and they recorded my reaction and stuff and they were like so so what are you going to do and I was like I need to get a haircut <laughs> just because I was embarrassed to have them in my house recording me with such a messy hair like because I'd only just woken up because of the time difference and they had a camera in my face it's like okay before there's any more recording I need to go get a haircut if that's okay yeah. so no, that's yeah good. Excellent. Um, when you're talking about Robert Taft there, I mean, obviously he's your coach now. And one of the things, when, obviously I'd spoke to him as well, um, and, and was speaking to yourself as well, I've noticed that everything, it's not just the fight, you know. Um, he knows about, you know, he's like you're saying about, oh, we needed to check if this guy got the gold, if this guy did this. If it, and yeah. very knowledgeable, you know. So um, I think that definitely helps as well, you know. It helps the whole system of it, you know. I mean, he's... He's a very knowledgeable coach from the point of view of how to how to kind of make sure you get the best result you can get as well. So um, I know that you're you're proud to have him as a coach. Um, is there anybody else last that you'd like to to thank so far on the you know on your journey? You know, um, of course, like Rob's number one, definitely. Like I said, um, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't. I don't think I would have qualified because of the maths and stuff, and just getting me motivated because I did have them competitions at the back end of last year where I needed to get a certain medal and if I didn't there was no hope of qualifying so um, he was there, there to motivate me but parents are a big thing and um, they have to put up with my weight cut and mood swings that's something I'm very grateful for them actually putting up with me um, my, uh, I've got really I've got two really close friends and they they both actually came from Taekwondo one of them doesn't do it anymore but um, she's extremely supportive my best friend is also my training partner, so mm -hmm. uh, that helps as well. We, we see each other every day. Um, they travel to Grand Prix, and they do take a lot of time. They've missed so much school over the like traveling with me to yeah. to competitions to just be my training partner. Like, I'm gonna have. I definitely owe people a lot after after I'm finished, or even when I'm still doing it, like working hand in hand with my training partner. If he's got like a, I know he's got a Junior Worlds mm -hmm. possibly coming up, and um. I just I'll be probably there just to repay the the favor. So I do I do have a good handful a good handful of people that I need to mm -hmm. um, to get back and thank. But it's it's a good group of people that I have around me. Like I'm very picky. I don't just let people into into my life and have such an impact. So to have that little group of people, it's I, I feel very blessed to have them there. So yeah, good, excellent. Okay, Jack, so um, that's really the, the interview over now. Um, I just want to thank you. Um, and also, I just want to wish you all the best and, and thank you so much for coming on here and being interviewed. We all look forward to your progress uh, and I'm sure seeing some silverware around your neck at 2021. All right, so. Thank you very much. The Olympics. Cheers. See you soon. All right. Cheers, Jack. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Jack Roy, skip up, axe kick, scores to the head, and gets the deduction for, for knocking down front toe. So these guys are swinging their life, leg wide, and getting enough pop to score. Beautiful, there's that skip up, and he, he's done it twice now, front kick, and he's gonna win the match. Jack Woolley, your champion from Ireland, wins in overtime with six, just under seven seconds left here.